Okay, students, welcome back. Um, what we're going to be doing right now, what we're going to be showing you on video, is how to do a spiral perm wrap. Now, there's a specific way to wrap the perm. If you look at a spool of thread, that's spiraled up and it's spiraled down. It's the same thing when we're doing a spiral perm wrap. Spiral perm wraps are normally saved for longer hair. So when you're doing this, you're always going to want to start at the bottom nape. You want to tilt the head forward so that you can uh, really reach down in there to do what you need to do. And you want the hair wet. It's best if it's wet. Uh, after a shampoo or whatever, you want it organized. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you the exact method for spiral perm wrapping. I'm using per, uh, purple rods. I know you guys have peach rods, but it doesn't matter what kind of rods you use. It's the same thing. All right. You're going to get your end papers and you want to place your comb flat on them and you're going to press against your hand and you're going to turn. You see where I'm turning and what this does is it flares it out so that it's easier to pick up and separates every one of those papers. Otherwise, you're spending a lot of time trying to separate papers and you need them. Now on your perm wrap, you've got different ways that you can uh, put the papers on. However, we're gonna use what's called a double flap wrap, two end papers. There is another one that you fold it in half and that's called a bookend and that's how you grasp the hair into it. Uh, my preference is this just because I'm not having to fuss folding it. You're just done. And your time is money when you're in this industry. So how you know the less time that you mess with stuff, the better. So the one thing that you want to do, now with, with the spiral perm wrap, there's a variety of ways you can do it. You can do all the rods going in one direction or the most popular method that's used is you do one row with them going in this direction, the next row going in the other, the next row going in that direction and back and forth or vice versa. Um, on some uh, videos, you're gonna see them separate the hair into four quadrants and then just work one end and then work the other. Uh, you know, just go across, be done with it, instead of having to go back and, and climb off over to the other side. Your subsection, you're going to take your perm rod, this end of it, There's the, this is the tail, you're going to take this end of it and you're going to measure it onto the hair. Your subsection should not be wider than that. These sections here, as you can see, are approximately just about an inch in length and that makes it about right. If the hair is really, really long, you want to use less. Because, uh, you know, with really, really long hair, the more you fill up that rod, the more product you're going to have to use, the likelihood of you not covering all of it becomes extreme. So uh, uh, sometimes you can do, I mean, I've done this with uh, really, really long hair. And it takes forever because you're wrapping and then you're walking up and then you're wrapping and then you're walking up to the head. It would have been better for me to have used uh, loop rods. And those are those real long ones, but that's a whole other adventure. Uh, anyways, so you're going to measure your rod, making sure that your subsection is not wider. You're going to take it, you're going to comb it out. And then what you're going to do, you want to make sure and you can bring it to a point. It's okay for you to bring it to a point. If you have a lot of little short hairs like I've got right there, you can give it a gentle twist, not tight, but a gentle twist, and you're going to put the bookends, or the double flap. Now, you want that hair to be wet. Otherwise, you have to keep spraying it. Now you're going to start at the bottom. You want this tail down. You don't want it up on top because it'll make you crazy trying to wrap it and get that out of the way. Keep it out of the way for now. You're going to hold it straight out. 
you want all that hair inside that perm rod. There's a little thing sticking out right there, but we're not going to worry about it. But you want all that hair and you want to start at the bottom. You want to hold it with all of your fingers to make sure it's in there. Once it's in there, see it's there, it's attached. Then you're going to spiral up and see that spiraling effect. And then you're going to spiral down. Now here's the trick. When you spiral back up again, and you might have to before you come all the way down, that depends on the length, you want to hold that perm rod real close to the scalp the entire time. Right there, but you're going to come to this line. You have to bring it to the line. You don't want it up on top, you want it right on that line. You're going to take your band and put it on the back of it. Now, see how nice that's, it's in there. If you put it loose, the perm rods will start shifting. They'll start moving in different directions. And I'm going to show you an example as well of what not to do. When you bring it out, again we have it. Now this mannequin has not been cut, so I've got, um, this is my Miss America mannequin. It has not been cut, so it's um, got a lot of little loose ends. Uh, normally when you do this, I recommend that you do a a zero to get rid of those little frayed ends. So that's in there. You do not wrap it in this form and expect it, okay? You do not keep it in the middle. That's in the middle. And I can tell right away that you didn't take it from one end, see there, you can see that loose hairs underneath there to the, to the other. You didn't spiral it up, you just rolled it in. Is that incorrect? Uh, it depends on what they want, but if they want a true spiral wrap, you've created really thick hair here, so the ends may not get enough product. That's the reason that you spiral it, so that the ends get the product they need. So I'm going to bring that back out. I'm going to then spiral it. See it? It's spiraling up just like a piece of thread. Now look at how much more it fills up that um, uh, rod. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over. I'm holding that tight onto the scalp. Make sure that goes back. They stay straight up. All right, I'm going to keep going here. And I'm just going to kind of quickly do this because I also want to show you how to do the next row. And um, what I'm going to be doing once I do the first two rows, I'm going, we're going to turn off the camera and then I'll finish the back. You'll come back for the, the rest of it. Now see, it's way down there and spiraled up to the top, finishes up at that line. And yes, it takes practice to do that. Yes, you have to watch what you're doing. You have to look at it. You don't just wrap it and then put it in there. Okay, so these are nice, straight up and down. And all right, so we're going to turn off the camera for a minute and then I'm going to start the next row. Ready? Okay. Okay, students, now you can see I've already finished the bottom row and you can see that those rods are full of hair. It's not just centered at the middle, so that means we've spiraled it up and down. Now, on the second row, you're going to do exactly the same thing. However, this time we're going in the opposite direction. This row was taken in this direction. Now we're going to take it into the other direction. And we don't want these wider than the, the, rod, it's, the rod itself. So again, same thing. It, <coughs> excuse me, not different. And you can see that I'm spiraling it down into it and then up so that it will rest right at that line again and this time the band is on the other side now the mistake that people think that they have to do is that they have to put them in between you don't you just rest it on top of the other rod it doesn't have to, the rod will just kind of lay in there naturally by itself um, it's not that much of an effort. Again. Okay, 
hang down, place it. And you can see that it's down there and now I'm traveling up, spiraling up with it. Now do you see how it's resting on top of the other rod? Sorry. And I'm going to move that band over. There you go. See it just it'll just do it on its own. And then you just move it over. So I wanted to show you how to do that. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to turn off the camera again. And I'm going to go ahead and go up to that, to the parietal line with this. Just one will go in this direction, the other one will go the other, just alternating. Then I'm going to show you how to do the sides. And actually what, what you would do on the sides if you want, um, let, let me um, finish this this row and then we'll come back again you'll see it finished and then I'm going to show you how to incorporate the sides to go along with the back so then you complete the whole area by itself you can if you want you have the option of doing the whole back and then incorporating the sides so um, I'm going to do one with the side incorporated one without so that you can see what I'm talking about okay so I'll see you in just a few minutes get this finished up Okay, students, now remember, keep in mind that length of hair has a lot to do with your subsections in between. In other words, how much you part off. And you can see that we didn't part off very much with this one. She's got about fine to medium hair. But um, the point is, is if, like if it was longer too, maybe our sections would be a little bit smaller because if you fill up the rod too much, like I said, it's the ends that are gonna be in trouble the ends that are not going to get that curl in there. So again, that's where loop rods would come in and, and we're going to demo that later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, this side came this way and then that went the other way. Now I'm going to start here again. You can see that this looks a little bit wider because of the sideburn. You see how that hair travels up. We could we put another smaller one down there? We could. I don't believe that'll make that much of a difference. So I'm just going to take this now. And you saw in the back how they just kind of lay real nice. Uh, the main thing is, is the area that you snap. Okay, again, I'm starting at the bottom. See that? It's attached now. One thing that you're going to hear, they're going to say, with really fine hair, not too much tension. If you don't, if you don't put that secured on there, it's not going to hold. You're going to get a very loose curl on the rod. Another factor is if they've got really, really fine hair, I don't know that they should be perming their hair. It, it can be very difficult. You would have to use a very gentle perm on that type of hair. And that comes back to knowing your product. So, all right, I'm on the bottom, and you see me spiraling to the top. Now I'm going to bring it down a bit, but then I'm going to bring it over again, stopping at the line, putting that hook up right there. And then go on to the next one. And when you're perming, I mean, you know, you can, you don't necessarily have to palm your comb. You might have to put it down. Uh, it, the whole thing is, is client safety, hair safety, client protection, all of that. You see that I'm still holding my comb, but you wouldn't be shot if you um, didn't. Okay, I, the reason I'm putting it down too is because I want you to see. I want you to see that spiral. See, I'm spiraling it down. It was up there, I spiraled it down a bit to hook it. Hook it in there. And then I just come in, spiraling it all the way up. Hold it tight to the scalp, not loose. If you hold it loose, it's going to come down a bit and it's going to cause you more work. You're going to have to be doing this to each one of the rods that you do. Okay, so now I'm going to come up to the next one and we're going to feed in just a couple in the back. We'll cut off again for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and do, but you can see how you can incorporate the sides with the back. You could go ahead and do the whole back if you want, and then the sides, but why not just do it all at one time? Let's be done with this. Let's, let's have it um, 
finished so that you can you know move on instead of going from one section to another section to another section because in just a little bit we're going to go above the parietal line to get this done okay again spiraling it down bringing it up and you see how that's laying real nice you see i mean i have it way down into the scalp i'm holding it down there bring that band up pull it back nice and tight in there not too tight it's not like pulling her hair or anything it's not tight like that that's not what we mean we're not stretching the hair we're just holding it taunt so that we can have um uh, you know a nice smooth curl going in there um they don't mean for you to hold it like this all right they want you to hold it straight out so you can get a uniform curl so again i'm going to start at the bottom and once you get used to doing this, believe me, it just becomes easier. There you go. Now we're fitting it into that. And we're going to come to travel around the back. Now see how loose that is? If I leave it loose, there you go. I don't want it loose. I want this to be curled all the way to the scalp without bending the band in there. You don't want to push the band into the hair at this area. You still want it to stay on top of the rod. The reason for that is because it'll create a crease. When you're putting a chemical on there, it could also create a break in the hair and you don't want it broken at the scalp. That would not be a very happy client if they had a lot of broken little hairs at their scalp. So I'm gonna work this in, bring it out, place it at the bottom again and spiral it to the top. Yeah, it covers quite a bit of that rod. And this time it's at a slight angle. Do you see that? Because now it's on top of the other rod, but still straight up and down. And now you can see these other rods underneath. And see, we're just kind of layering it on top of itself right there so that um, we have a nice uniform spiral wrap and it's it can also be called a stack wrap they're stacked on top of each other because uh, you can spiral wrap a big section and still wrap it in that form again the problem you might have would be the ends are they getting the product see we know the ends are going to get the product because they're down here so that's the specific reason for spiraling it it, it spreads the hair out when you spiral it all right so you can see it there we're going to turn off again so i'll do the top all the way up to the parietal line then i'll show you how to do the top of the head all right i'll see you in just a few okay students we're back and you can see that it's totally wrapped this is why they call it a stack wrap now some of my bands broke uh, some of these perm rods are old, so that's going to happen sometimes. The bands are going to break. I did put it under the dryer. But what I did on one side, what I, I separated the top. Because what I did on this side, I subsectioned. I split it in half above the parietal line. Split it in half. And on this side, all of them are going side to side. And uh, just basically one's going in one direction, one's going in the other. Just the same thing. The only thing you have to be careful of with a spiral wrap is them falling down into the face. So this seems to work pretty good, especially if you've got the, the perm rods spiraled correctly. If you just wrap it, they will fall. Now on the other side, <clears throat> what I did was I went in this form. I'm sorry, this is the side I did side to side. The other side I did front to back. You can see that the perm rods are all facing uh, going backwards now when you get ready to take your spiral wrap off you're going to have your client at the shampoo bowl and when we get into perming i'll explain all the details about it but you're going to have them yeah if if they're really drippy you might give them a towel to put on their face because it is hard to to kind of clean this up but you always start at the bottom you don't start at the top and you just kind of feel it and you look for that little knob you bring it down and then you just unroll it exactly the way that you wrapped it. You want to put your rods in a colander. 
it's always wise I put mine in a colander in the salon and like that when you rinse it out they can drain for a while you keep the end paper in your hand so I'm just reaching down there taking that off and that's another reason you put this on the bottom if you had it on top it would be driving you nuts trying to take that off so as I do this all I'm doing is just spiraling it out and you can see you'll be able to see that curl as I come around the edge I'm going to come back over here so you can get a good view of what I'm doing so I'm feeling for the little knob it's up there inside and then I just and um, normally the hair will be wet with perm solution so but you can see that they curl just fine I went ahead and, and dried it so that we could uh, take it down but once your hand is full of end papers I have a trash can right here then you throw them in the trash normally the trash cans are going to be underneath the shampoo bowl now this one here is broken I'm just going to throw that away um, but I'm just taking them all out exactly in that order so you can see that I'm going to move up a little bit you can see that they're just coming out just fine let me take this one out you see it spiraled up real nice and uh, normally uh, you know it's not going to spiral up that tight with it wet it will come down a bit but you can see that spiraling action that's why you do it that way it's not just all wrapped up within itself so I'm going to take this one down you can see it a little more see how that just comes out and um, <clears throat> again we're going to leave for a little bit I'm going to take the entire back off and then uh, when you come back and like I said we just pause the camera is all we do I'm going to pause the camera for just a sec I'm going to take these down you already see how I did it and then you'll get to see the result of what they look like after I'm not going to brush them out they're all going to stay in this form and uh, then you know we may take our fingers after we get it all out and everything and just kind of finger comb it and uh, you can see the variables and the difference that we get on it so um, just uh, we'll go ahead and do this and then uh, come back and show you the finished product okay so students you can see how nicely these spiraled forward here now remember this side we did front to back I want you to see what happens what will be the variable okay do you see how they're kind of flipping up a little bit that's the downside to this it just depends again on what you want there's a lot more volume in it you see how they kind of flip up as opposed to going down and spiraling nicely like this now I'm going to turn it around so you can see the other side that we did still going in a vertical as opposed to horizontal uh, direction and these continue on with the same rhythm as we have on the bottom of this still continue there's no break in that line okay so um, if these are all things to take into consideration this just depends on what the client wants now notice what happens here along the hairline possibly along the hairline and see that's what makes it difficult maybe we should have come in this form because we're getting the same reaction even though it's vertical as the other side these are things that you look for these are decisions that you make so maybe along the perimeter line at the frontal area instead of you know just just above the the upper ridge right here at the front I mean yeah the upper ridge maybe we should have done them vertical coming this form instead of the other way does it look bad no because I can still bring it down and make it look like it's spiraled this however we're not going to be able to these are just going to other than the front like I said you'll see it up in the front where they'll spiral nicely and see that's what I'm saying we're 
organize that, all right? And then this is what I'm saying also about having that little tang out front. So yeah, it's still trying to dance around a little bit. So these are areas that you have to be careful of. So you, but you can see that it's coming down okay, but as we travel up above that upper ridge, it starts flipping out a bit as opposed to laying like it does on the other side. Now, as soon as I finish taking these off, I'll show it to you. So you can see what I'm talking about. Now, cameraman, can you see the sides okay or do I need to turn her a little bit? That's okay. better. Okay. Now, you see what I'm saying? It's not like this. Now we're getting a lot of loose curl in there. If the hair is all one length, it could work. But if it's not, like this is slightly layered, and you can see very well that it's not going to work as well. It's going to stand up a little bit. So really going vertical on the sides and then traveling around the front vertically as opposed to, um, and you can see how, let me turn her around because they're vertical here, but you see how they fall differently and these spiral because they were front to back. Um, but yet on the top, they don't. So these are just minor defects and stuff that you can have when you're doing it. But look at the back, how nice that is. I mean, that is really spirally. And um, they all just, you can definitely see those, those spiral curls right there. And the direction they're going in, these are going in this direction, those are going in that direction. Now we can finger comb this to create just some nice loose curls in there. I'm just going to do half of it for you to see it. And then again, you can take it and separate it, put product in it. But if a client wants a spiral perm, that's what they're going to get. All right. It's not necessarily going to lay in this form. A lot of people think that it's going to lay spirally. It is not. It's going to lay like just a bunch of wavy curls as that side is. All right. So that's what they look like at the finish. This is what it looks like when you finger comb it. And it's just, you can see that S shaping in there. And it's just a slight movement, but if she's got really long hair with some product, she could probably take it, scrunch it in there. And then again, this is where product comes in mind and is necessary to totally create a finished look. And you see that that's up front coming forward. These are a little bit more spirally going down in that, in that same direction. But yet these, because they came forward, are doing exactly that. So this is the result of a spiral wrap. I mean, you get a lot of volume. You get a lot of curl. And see, if I, as long as I don't pull it out very much, it's not too bad. But if I really run my fingers through it, it just has a lot of curl and a lot of volume to it. So doing a spiral wrap, like I said, is meant more for long hair. And we could take this now and do an updo style with it. We could do whatever, because now we've got some really, really beautiful curled memory from that spiral wrap that we did. And uh, lots of good curl, lots of volume that we could come up with, do something where we bring it all up and just pop those curls out. Uh, many, many areas that we could do with this. And this is where your creative juices could flow. Do a spiral wrap. Leave it overnight. You know, not everybody has a dryer, but leave it overnight, a sit down dryer. So anyways, leave it overnight and let it work. And then the next morning, take them down like I showed you. Make sure you put the end papers in your hand. If you leave them in the rod, you're just causing more work for yourself later. You want to just leave them in your hand, put the rods in a, in a colander like that so you can rinse them off, sanitize them. Much easier, and you don't leave them in the shampoo bowl for somebody else to pick up. Those are your responsibility. And then, of course, you throw the little papers in a trash can. As Once your hand gets full, just put them in the trash can. Get used to that and save yourself some time because otherwise I'd have to go back to that colander 
and um, start separating the papers. Why? It, it's the same amount of time to take it off as it is to tear that paper off, just a sequence. Tear the paper off, put it in the colander, and then put the paper in the trash. So um, I know this doesn't look like a, like a fantastic look. Um, some of this is really pretty though. I think if it had highlights, my goodness, it would be really, really pretty. But there's a, there's a lot that we can do with it. And we may do an updo later and just show it to you, maybe at our next cut and say, remember the spiral wrap that we did? Well, this is the updo that we did with it. So we may just do that for you so you can see it or some kind of a style. But I hope that you've learned something about spiral wrapping. You always start from the bottom. Remember the tang, the, the, the end stays down because it's so much easier once you unhook it to just grab it and pull it down. Otherwise, if you do it this way, you uh, grab it and you're trying to pull this down and that's going to get stuck in all those little curls and you're going to have a heck of a time. So always remember this goes down. Remember that it's got to come to the line when the, when the perm rod rests. Remember with the spiral wrap, it is wrapped in a spiral. That's why these are not just right on together. That's why this is spiraled right there. You can see it, it's spiraled all the way down because that's how you wrapped it, all right? So these are things that you learn about spiral wrapping and just about doing hair, the longer hair. They're gonna come in. This is worth, this is more money for you than a regular perm wrap. Now we are gonna be learning how to do what's called a nine section and everybody just calls it a regular perm wrap. So um, just a regular perm wrap, nine section perm wrap, you are going to learn to do that also, and that takes a little bit more thinking on your part. Takes a, you know, there's specific areas that we put those rods in, and uh, you'll you'll see the pictures in the book. Just look in the book under the perming chapter, and you'll see that nine section. And I'm going to show you a way to do it that makes it a lot easier than trying to you know manipulate it to get it just right. So there's certain things that we still need to cover. Remember, we don't have a lot of time left. So please stay up with your homework, stay up with the videos, stay up with getting things done and keep your grades up. Take care guys, God bless. I hope you've learned something from this and we'll see you uh, another video.